Hey everyone, this video is going to quickly walk through elimination disorders. Elimination disorders are conditions that involve the inappropriate elimination of urine or feces. They're typically identified in early childhood. There's two main types of elimination disorders. These are enuresis and encoparesis. We're going to start off by talking about enuresis. Enuresis is urinary incontinence. When this occurs at night, it's referred to as nocturnal enuresis. To diagnose enuresis, you need to meet the following criteria. You need to have two or more episodes of urinary incontinence per week for a period of three months or greater in a patient who's older than five years old. Now, when it comes to management, the first line treatment is to restrict fluids at night, to incorporate a reward system, and to try an enuresis alarm. If these interventions aren't successful, the next step is to try pharmacological therapy. And this, uh, one of the main examples of this is desmopressin. You could further divide enuresis into primary and secondary enuresis. And when it comes to distinguishing primary versus secondary enuresis, it basically boils down to recognizing if there was a period of continence uh, prior to the incontinence starting. So for primary enuresis, uh, the incontinence begins without a prior prolonged period of continence versus secondary enuresis, which is incontinence that occurred after there was a prolonged period of continence. So at that point, the child had basically had a period of continence and then developed the incontinence. That's what secondary enuresis is. Uh, you could talk about the causes of these uh, separately. So for primary, this generally involves genetics, delayed central nervous system maturation, hormones, or UTIs. And then comparatively for secondary, uh, it's mainly caused by psychological stressors, diabetes, and UTIs. For both, the initial evaluation involves performing your urinalysis. Now the second type of elimination disorder is encopresis, and this is the repeated involuntary passage of feces into inappropriate places. Most of the time, this is uh, a patient's clothes. So for encopresis, you can't diagnose this until a patient is at least four years old, and the first line treatment is behavioral therapy. So you might be wondering how to keep the age for encopresis and enuresis in mind. So encopresis deals with feces, also known as poop. Poop is four letters, so you have to be at least four years old to diagnose it. Enuresis, on the other hand, involves urine. Urine is five letters, so you must be older than five years old to diagnose it. So let's do a couple quick true-false questions. This one says, secondary nocturnal enuresis involves incontinence without a prior prolonged period of incontinence. Is this true or false? Pause if you need to. This is false. The question is actually describing primary nocturnal enuresis. Remember that secondary nocturnal enuresis is a period of incontinence that occurs after a period of continence. Next up, a three-year-old child who has continued to bed wet twice weekly for the past six months should be diagnosed with nocturnal enuresis. Pause if you need to think about it. And this is false. Remember, the criteria to diagnose enuresis must be that uh, the incontinence must occur two or more times per week for a period of three months or greater in children who are older than five. And obviously this kid has urinated twice per week for the past six months, but he's only three years old, so we wouldn't be able to diagnose any rhesus at that time. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions about this information or about anything else, please leave it below and I'll get back to you. Thank you.